I'm Mr. Prashant Daladgi from Prashant Advanced Survey LP. I'm the owner of the company. I had presented in last year in Intrigia as well. So the agenda for this today's speech will be about our company, Prashant Advanced Survey LP, about mobile LiDAR technology, data captured by Leica Pegasus 2 mobile LiDAR system, LiDAR data processing methodologies, software is used for generating the outputs, use of LiDAR technology for highways and railway projects, case study of the LiDAR survey for uh, the Vishakhapatnam airport, key factors affecting the accuracy of mobile mapping datasets, GNSS, GPS base stations are the ground control points. So we start with our introduction of our company. Uh, I would like to rush on this, because you can always find all the information on the website. But even then, it's a 30 years old company uh, founded by my father, Mr. Shivanandalagi. So it's a family business. We use all the advanced technologies. This is our management team. Myself, Prashant Aladgi. My father, Shivanand Aladgi, he's a co-founder and chief technical officer. D.N. Jadav is my father's friend. And my wife, Deepa Aladgi. About me, I'm doing my a PhD. I'm a PhD research scholar. I've done my civil engineering in 1999. After 13 years, I did my ME civil. Stood first in college and second in University of Pune. Masters of engineering. Uh, sub certified by the sub utility engineering. Having 25 years experience in the advanced land and mapping, speaker in 26 international conferences worldwide on LiDAR technology. Of course, uh, we have successfully completed more than 30,000 kilometers of highway surveys. I told you the statistics have changed now. As present, these are the values. 3,000 kilometers of railways and two airports in India. And one of the international projects done by, was, uh, done by us was in Saudi Arabia for 700 kilometers. That was for Highway 65. That was recently completed this year. Yeah, my father, he's a founder, I told you. He's having 49 years of experience. He's age is 70, still comes into the office, sits in the office. And um, we are the first in India to have the Leica Pegasus 1 mobile mapping system in the year 2015. In 2016, we upgraded from Pegasus 1 to Pegasus 2. And in 2017, we bought one more Pegasus 2. So you can say that we are the proud owners of two Leica Pegasus, Pegasus 2 systems. And last year, I've cleared all my debts. So we are free of all the loans. We also have uh, drones, as I told you. We have uh, survey grade drones with us. So where our mobile mapping cannot go, is not accessible area. So we do it by drones. These are all the set of instruments which we have, including all the DGPS, Pegasus 2, drones, the softwares. These are the list of accessories uh, or, and the processing computing power. An office, owned office in Pune, based in Pune. We are based in Pune, India. And these are the services provided by us. So we do a lot of mobile mapping for highways in India. And these are the list of events and conferences where I was a speaker. It starts from Hong Kong, China in 2015. That was in Hexagon Live 2015. So you can see, again, in US, Hexagon Live in 2016. Literally, I had been to all the US uh, Hexagon Live programs as a speaker. And then it was in, uh, again, you know, Las Vegas, Hyderabad. Uh, then Amsterdam is a geospatial world forum. Then again, Stuttgart, Germany, Interior TV. Then again, a uh, lot of conferences. And last but not the least, uh, there was a Hexagon Live last year in 2022 uh, as well. And here I am. So now, with this introduction, I start with my session about mobile radar technology. So mobile radar is an advanced mapping solution used to collect survey grade 3D point clouds data quickly and accurately, incorporates the most advanced LiDAR sensors, cameras, GNSS, GPS receivers, and the IMU. IMU stands for the Inertial Measurement Unit. Mobile mapping is the process of collecting geospatial and pavement distance data from a mobile vehicle, typically fitted with a mobile LiDAR system. Output after processing includes georeference 3D point cloud data, digital 3D maps in AutoCAD, DWG, ArcGIS shape files, pavement distance images, panoramic views, and videos. So the data captured by the Pegasus 2 mobile data system, what does it compromise of? Like a Pegasus 2 mobile data, uh, mobile data can capture 3D scan point data, point data in 360 degrees. That's using Z plus F9012 scanner. It's a profiler. It scans about 1 million points per second. The high resolution photographs in all directions and the pavement as well. Trajectory file or the position information or the GNSS information. So these are the three basic information which is captured by any mobile mapping device. The above data can be captured for about 80 to 100 kilometers per day. 
depending on the site and the road conditions. So if you're working in the city area, it can be 50 kilometers. If you're working on a highway, it can be 120 kilometers in a day. GPS based station observations in, in, uh, ensure the accuracy of the data. The base stations are very essential, at most important. Requires proper logistics planning because you are doing 100 kilometers in one day. So you have to have a good logistics planning. Uh, my people uh, start from one city, they end the survey and the halt in the other city, and again keep on moving. So you cannot be stationary at one uh, particular lodge or uh, one particular location. Absolute accuracy of the LIDAR data is about 5 centimeters, plus minus 5 centimeters. Precision of Z plus F90 laser profile is less than 1 millimeter. The data uh, captured by mobile LIDAR is processed in the following softwares. We follow the workflow, which is uh, quite robust. The data first goes into the uh, Waypoint Generation Explorer for trajectory preparation, at, uh, Leica Autobi for the point cloud generation and registration. Then the data goes to the Leica Map Factory for RGS for feature extraction of point, line, and polygon features. Then it, is going, it, it goes to the 3D reshaper for DEM and contours if it is required by the client. And of course, the RGS at acquired MSXL or drawing, uh, for drawing and data display. So on the left-hand side, you can see the picture, which is the camera data. And the right-hand side shows the point cloud data, the leader data. The typical screenshot of the urban area, the point cloud data, how it looks like. It's a very good and crisp data because it's having a Z plus F9012 profiler in the Leica Pegasus 2. This is a typical uh, view of the rural area, rural road, and the front camera of the rural road, same rural road, which is quite clear. I told you this is the Map Factory Advanced software. On the left hand side, you see the synchronized um, camera data, and the right hand side, you have the point cloud data. It can ro you can rotate the point cloud data in any angle view, and you can zoom it, zoom out. This is the trajectory corrected or the trajectory file. Everything is green. That means the data is processed, and it's within permissible limits. If you usually don't get the data accurate, then it will be red flags will be there, or it will be in a different color. So here you can see it's entered like green. So that means the data has been pro processed properly. This is how uh, we prepare a 3D plan out of the data which is captured. We usually have a lot of layers, about 110 layers for a, a, highway, a typical highway project. Uh, which contains all point line polygon features. It's quite dense. You can see here. Sorry. Yeah, you can just see here all the building structures, trees, electric poles, line features, polygon features. Yeah, you can see it more zoomed. And we put it all in different layers so that it becomes very easy for the designer to um, you know, uh, make a geometric design of it. Now I come to the railway project where we had mounted the Pegasus 2 on the railway, which is the engine, a tower wagon. It's called a tower wagon. Of course, um, it looks very simple, but it's difficult to mount it on there because the height is too much when you stand below. And uh, the weight of the instrument is 50 kilo, 50. So you have to typically mount it. It requires at least seven to eight people to mount it on uh, that platform. So when the tower wagon is not available, still we can do the survey. It is done by using the motorized trolleys. This is called a typical motorized trolley. We can, it runs on, it runs on, runs on diesel. And uh, it, it has a speed limit of 25 to 30 kilometers per hour, but still very good, good enough. So this is the point cloud data of the railway tracks. This is a feature extraction once you do the, from the railway tracks. The uses of LIDAR technology for highway, railway, and airport projects. projects. Mobile LIDAR survey is very fast since 50 to 100 kilometers of the highways or railway network can be captured per day based on the traffic and site conditions. We can capture dense data, typically about 1 million points per second, using the uh, laser, line 0, 1, 2. The data captured by mobile radar also gives 360 degree panoramic views and the street views. The process is mostly automated, hence less chances of human error and better quality of data is obtained. Airport runway can be captured within a few minutes without any major interruption to the air traffic. Very effective in creating the 3D digital maps uh, or HDJS maps. I don't know why it's stuck. Is it uh, is not moving ahead? Oh, yeah, got it. So case study, uh, mobile radar survey is very fast. It's I already told you. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do the case study. Now, case study of the topography survey of resurfacing of runways, taxiways, and development of associated infrastructure for Vishakhapatnam Airport. So this is a defense airport in India defense as well as the commercial airport in India. The total length was 5.6 kilometers of runways and taxiways. Time period for data, site data capture was only 30 minutes. Time period of the delivery was one week for data processing and delivery. 
instrument used was like a Pegasus 2. The scanner was Z plus of 9012, which sits inside the like a Pegasus 2. The GPS base stations used were like a GS14. Accuracy of data was plus minus one centimeter. It's very important because it's all open. There's no canopy at all in the airports. So uh, the deliveries of the projects: soft copy of the topographic survey data, 3D maps, AutoCAD drawings, shape files showing the existing roadside features or the runway features, point line and polygon features. Soft copy of registered 3D point clouds in HPC or LAS format, and DTM tins, contours generated from the captured database to know the topography. Cross sections of the runway at every 5 meter interval for the width of the runway. We can also generate at 1 meter interval, but it was too dense, so 5 meter was sufficient for them. Soft copy of the images captured by six sets of cameras in various directions along the roads, with all camera views going about 360 degrees and the free Leica viewing software. Runway condition, distress in MRTH format. So if there are any cracks or portholes, usually don't have any portholes, but you have something on the taxiways. So that's very important. Google KML file of the survey runway and the taxiways, just as a comp complementary service. And you can see a Google image, which has been superimposed on the runway. So the red portion is the where we had done the survey, actual survey, and the remaining is extracted from the Google Earth. So yeah, you can see some of the screenshots of the point cloud data of uh, the runway, actual runway. So it's a beautiful runway. I mean, it's a defense runway. So they are having a number of you know, crisscrossing um, runways. So this is the camera data of the typical runway. And yeah, so this is again the camera and the point cloud data. The left side is the camera data, and the right side is the point cloud data of the runway. OK, now I come to the uh, ending of this. Uh, key factors affecting the accuracy of the mobile mapping data sets. So what we discovered is that there is one key factor which is affecting the uh, accuracy and the performance of the mobile mapping device. So what is it? The major factor affecting the accuracy of the mobile mapping data is the obstruction to the GPS signal on the mobile mapping instrument where the data is captured. That means uh, on the mobile mapping device, there is an inbuilt GPS. So if this mobile mapping device is running below a canopy or below the trees, or you know uh, some lot of uh, obstruction like uh, uh, tall towers, like in New York City or Mumbai City, sky skyscrapers are there. They are obstructing the GPS signals. The more the obstruction, the more uh, you lose the accuracy. So I've made three uh, site scenarios. So this is in site one. You can see the Google Earth image with minimum obstruction to the GPS signals. So you can see this is the road. So this road is there, and it's not having more of obstruction. There are no more trees there. So there you get a very good accuracy about one centimeter. So accuracy about one centimeter x, y, and z coordinates with a good exposure to GPS signal, that is minimum obstruction. OK. So you can see the parameters. I think it's readable, uh, 9 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and 17 millimeter. So it's very good. That's the maximum parameters. Average is 4 millimeter, 3 millimeter, and 8 millimeter. So you can get it. And this shows uh, the red one is the graph of uh, easting. The uh, green one is the northing. And the uh, blue one is the height. So these are the accuracy parameters. OK, so now the second side condition with medium obstruction to the GPS signal. You can see there are a lot of uh, there are a row of trees besides the highway. So this is a medium obstruction. So in this case, we get an accuracy of 10 to uh, immediately 8 to 10 centimeters. Got it? So you can see the factors here. Uh, average is uh, 8 millimeters, uh, 7 millimeters. But when you have the trees, you have the spikes there. Got it? So when they have spikes, that is up to 10 centimeters, 8 to 10 centimeters. Now, this is a third case. It's a very difficult. It's full of uh, forest area. So there are, you literally cannot know what, where the road is. But the road is actually coming like this, and it's going like this. So you, can ma you have marked the GPS point also there. So the road is going from here. It goes here like this, and the road is going here. So this is the road with huge canopy. And in this condition, you get a lot of graphs, which is up down, undulating. And then you have an accuracy of about 1 to 2 meters. <laughs> so it's in x, y, and z coordinates with heavy obstruction to GPS signal. That's a dense forest. So what is the solution here? Generally, you have to have a control points, a lot of control points, either by total station or any other device. Uh, fix the control points, and then put, uh, bring the control points to the processing software, and then adjust the trajectory file again, and then process it. Then it will be within permissible limits. So this is the usual practice which is to be done by, for uh, canopy areas. And what is this DGPS base stations? You can do it using uh, any uh, GPS, uh, survey grade GPS, of course. And uh, it's, uh, it should be dual frequency, of course. And uh, it can be done on, it can be established on so many points, like um, existing uh, features. Or if there's no feature, you can have your 
uh, stones uh, around or the rectangular stones, and you can have the control points. Okay. So this ends my presentation.